This is one of the things I find interesting. I'm a mom. I've done my research. I've accumulated all this data. I'm, I'm asking questions. I'm asking people to help me solve it. I've come across the fact that there's a thing called a flame arrestor. I'm asking for people to help me understand. You know, I, I'm not smart. I'm, I'm not science trained. I don't have this background. I want to help my kids get through this. I have twin daughters. They were 16 and a half. They just finished their sophomore year. They're rising juniors. You guys all remember junior year of high school. It's tough. It's intense. They'd go out to the supermarket. They'd been washing cars all weekend. They'd buy graham crackers, marshmallows, and chocolate bars. They ask permission. They ask me for matches. I don't want to give them matches. You can get this stuff in your hands and catch a burn. I make them wait for a lighter. What I didn't know, what I'm hearing and sharing, is I've now talked to so many dozens of us burn survivors that this has happened to. Here's where our mistake is. We buy a product. The process of tipping is what allows the ignition source to enter the vapor trail. The vapor is an invisible wick. It will flash back inside the bottle. Under pressure, it will shoot jetting flames. I call it a flamethrower effect. I didn't originate that name. Flame jetting was the first time I found it online and I was like, oh my god, this makes sense to me finally. I would tell my friends, I want to meet that mom who's in this interview online about flame jetting. I saw a research analyst that I was like, oh my gosh, these people finally are making sense of my horror. I don't sleep at night. I can't get this out of my head. I feel what did I miss? I, how did I make a mistake? What did I do wrong? My kid is severely injured, and so is her twin sister from having been there that night and watching it. How do you help your kids get over it? What did they do wrong when they are breaking down day after day and you are afraid for their mental state? What do you want to do? You want to help them understand what did you do wrong? You tipped a bottle. Tipping a bottle, is that misuse? Is that reasonable use? I guess it's debatable. I'll tell you there's two different trades of thought on that. Some people say that's misuse. Some people say it's reasonable and foreseeable. I don't want to debate it. I want to solve the problem. I'm very respectful of how hard working we have people in government. I want you to know that I was here this summer in Maryland with my daughter. We came out for three surgeries. She had tissue expanders. If you don't know, they're excruciating. We came out for a few surgeries. We had some tremendous things. We had an amazing surgeon that got her to a fantastic outcome. But it took nine surgeries. When you leave home for three weeks and you pack your bags at the beginning of April on Mother's Day, you're not dressing for Baltimore weather in the middle of summer. It took us three months before we could go back home. This is two years later. Guys, I'm not talking about that acute phase. I'm not talking about the night with the helicopter and the light flight and she is transported into a, a major trauma center and then ambulance into a burn center. She had to learn to walk again. And I don't need you to think about that. I need you to think about how to help me solve this. I want you to think about the fact that, yes, these things have been researched. I stand here to tell you I respect CPSC. I went to a meeting, an ASTM subcommittee meeting, because I'm in between surgeries number five and six. I have now missed my daughter's prom. I had promised her I'd be back for prom. How do I leave her twin sister and go back for that? Now we're coming up to graduation. I gave my word, I'll be home for graduation. I am so worried and so scared. I'm watching a kid who's talked it out through so much and she doesn't complain. The night of the injury, the first responders ask her, on a scale of one to 10, how bad was your pain? She says it's a six. So just know that's a strong kid. That's not a complainer kid. That's a kid that's saying, you know what? I'm going to find a way to get through this. How she's been able to love and support her twin sister leaves me in awe. You know, she helped her twin sister go to college a few weeks ago, set up a room. What did she do? She just finished a summer of pain and suffering. She's got more surgeries. She sits and has her skin burned 
by a laser, and it lasts hours, and she's wide awake. So I don't need sympathy. I'm not here for that. I need solutions. I need people that say, you know what? This could happen to any of us. Fire is non-discriminatory. It does go for things like the lowest point. Let me move this forward. We know what this is like. We've seen that. We've talked about this. I just want you to say, hey, look, this is what happens. It's tipping. Merely tipping a bottle is what allows this to occur. If this is misuse, it's called porn. I went oops, to an ASTM subcommittee meeting to ask questions in July. I sat in the Consumer Product Safety Commission. I'm there, I'm intimidated. These are the science guys, this is underwriting laboratory.